Hello and welcome to our From Inspiration to Practice, delivering Next Zero through local government conference. I'm Alison Stewart, Director of Aberdeen Climate Action, one of the organisers of this conference. We are delighted to have four inspirational short speeches to kick our conference off. First is going to be Jenny Lane, leader of Aberdeen City Council, who Aberdeen Climate Action work with on their Net Zero Delivery Unit. Secondly is Mary McCallan, Scottish Minister for Environment, Biodiversity and Land Reform. Third will be Rebecca Evan, who is the Welsh Minister for Finance and Local Government. And last but not least is Jamie Driscoll, the North of Tyne, the North of Tyne Mayor. This is all about sharing good practice, learning from each other and advancing our collective journey to net zero. Please use the networking times to connect with each other. Visit the expo booths, post useful links and information in the chat throughout the conference. And most importantly, enjoy everything that's Hopping Conference has to offer. After our four presentations, my colleague Alan will come on screen to introduce the first round of workshops. So without further ado, it's on to Jenny. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jenny Lane and I'm the leader of Aberdeen City Council. And I'm absolutely delighted to have been asked to speak at today's conference. As you will know, following Committee on Climate Change recommendations, the UK has pursued ambitious net zero greenhouse gas targets. And the recent IPCC report has highlighted the need for reduced carbon emissions in all sectors of our economy and society, and for this shift to be immediate and sustained. Therefore, it's clear the transition to net zero is a, a journey that every nation, city, sector, organisation and community needs to take. While it is vital for all to respond, as major employers, it's essential that local government plays a key role by setting net zero targets and delivering a, a rapid reduction of our own carbon footprint. We must also use our influence and decision making at a local level to contribute a leadership role in the net zero transition. The decisions we make now will have a lasting impact for many years to come. Our choices can support green jobs, skills development, and enable a fair and just transition. Through local government policy and placemaking, through our commissioning, regeneration and investment programs, our education capacity and skills, our public engagement and partnership working, we are well placed to lead by example. In doing so, we can drive net zero ambition and play a leading role in preparing our local areas for a, a changing climate. In Aberdeen, we understand these drivers only too well. Aberdeen's pivotal position in the energy sector means there's a, an urgent need to respond quickly to the net zero challenge. By building on local skills in energy innovation, energy expertise and infrastructure already in place, we can rise to the challenge. It is clear local government can be a cornerstone for change by leading the net zero transition in their city or local area and beyond. But a step change in ambition requires collective action. Achieving net zero requires collaboration, coordination, and a significant scale of action. By combining local knowledge, resources, expertise, and skills, we can secure the most appropriate local solutions. I know Aberdeen has the skills, institutions, proven track record, vision and commitment to deliver the energy transition at pace, but it will require the efforts of many. Aberdeen Whilst the scale of the challenge before us is significant and may seem daunting, we must also remember that by delivering action for net zero, we can also make a positive impact on many of the wider local outcomes local government is striving to achieve. Initiatives like Aberdeen's Combined Heat and Power Network are helping to provide access to lower cost and lower carbon heat for some of the hardest to heat properties in the city and the lowest income households. The transition to low and zero emission vehicles in the city helps to improve air quality. Local active travel options and infrastructure can benefit health and well-being, as can an increase and enhancement of our green and natural places. It is vital that a net zero transition is fair, sustainable and just. Therefore, 
a key area to address is building local net zero skills through training, upskilling and reskilling in construction, low carbon heating and energy efficiency. So in conclusion, I believe local government can and should be at the heart of change as we seek to deliver action to reduce carbon emissions and transition to net zero. I believe we can and must use the energy transition journey to implement measures which will improve our place, economy and quality of life for our local population. And I believe that by following through on our individual net zero commitments, we can and will bring long lasting benefits for society as a whole. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I should like to begin by thanking Aberdeen Climate Action, Ash Den, the Centre for Alternative Technology and Climate Emergency UK for giving me the opportunity to speak with you today. This is a very important moment for Scotland on the world stage. The upcoming COP26 Climate Summit in Glasgow is the world's best chance to deliver a deal that supports the goals of the Paris Agreement. We want to deliver lasting action towards a net zero and a climate resilient future. We want to do that in a way that is fair and which leaves nobody behind. We will use Scotland's role in COP26 and our position as European co-chair of the Under Two Coalition to help secure a Glasgow agreement that sees all countries commit to taking the urgent action needed. You know, the climate and nature crises are the single greatest long-term threat that we face. It really is no exaggeration to say that the future of our planet and everything living on it depends on action taken now. So I am so delighted that you are all showing your commitment to climate action at a vital local level by joining this important conference today. It is exciting to see organisations come together from across the UK and Europe to share knowledge and experience and to showcase some fantastic examples of local level net zero transition projects. Just as we saw throughout the pandemic, government and organisations at local level are uniquely well placed to play a critical role in stimulating transformational behavioural change. Moving towards a net zero society, it will require us all to embrace that significant change. And today you are highlighting the considerable work already achieved by local authorities, businesses and voluntary organisations who are collaborating and supporting communities to tackle climate change and to be resilient and to be sustainable. Local authorities in particular have such a key role to play in implementing our shared climate change priorities. And place-based climate action is absolutely crucial to achieving our national and global climate change objectives. Place is where people, location and resources combine to create a sense of identity and purpose. It is at the heart of addressing the needs of our communities and realising their potential. Rethinking how our places are lived in, planned, delivered and adapted will help to future-proof our vi villages, towns and cities from the more extreme and costly impacts of climate change. In order to prioritise place and local communities and to encourage better collaboration and community involvement in decision-making, the Scottish Government and COSLA have adopted the PLACE principle. This principle underlines a commitment to work with local communities in order to improve the lives of people, support inclusive and sustainable economic growth, and to create more successful places. The development of low carbon and resilient places across Scotland, for example, through our 20 minute neighbourhoods concept, will provide ready access to facilities that we need for everyday life significantly reducing private car dependency and increasing walking, cycling and public transport use, as well as supporting the wellbeing economy. The Scottish Government wants to support 
and to learn from those places across Scotland which are already leading the way in bringing together the key ingredients to create a new way of living and working locally. And in 2021, we will begin to share lessons from several key demonstrator locations to promote good practice, facilitate conversations and offer resources and a route map for other places to pursue these goals. A just and fair transition to net zero is essential. It's essential for the health of our planet and of our people. We can reduce emissions, we can improve air quality, we can enjoy better green space, protect nature, and ultimately ensure that we leave a healthy planet for future generations to enjoy. Local authorities and key stakeholders have a vital role to play in this crucial mission. And so I want to thank you all for your incredible efforts. And I very much look forward to working with you in the important years ahead. I'd like to thank you all once again for your commitment to climate action and I'm sure that you will enjoy today's thought-provoking and inspiring conference. Thank you very much. I'm really pleased to be able to talk to you today about how the Welsh Government is tackling climate change with local authorities and with communities. I'd like to begin by saying a big thank you to the organisers of this important conference and to extend a really warm welcome to you all from across Wales and the UK and the world. And it is so important that we work together across borders to address this global threat. Addressing climate change has long been close to the heart of this Welsh Government. We passed our Wellbeing of Future Generations Act in 2015 and it's a groundbreaking and world leading piece of legislation which requires us to think long term, locally and globally. This year we formally committed to net zero emissions by 2050 and we aspire for our public sector to be net zero by 2030. Following the election in May, our First Minister created a Minister for Climate Change, bringing together policy on critical areas such as planning, transport, housing and energy into one ministry. We're committed to a just transition to a net zero Wales and everyone has their part to play. In the run-up to COP26, we are running a climate pledge campaign to galvanise action from government, business and communities to work together to tackle this emergency. This sits alongside our Welsh Government policies and proposals which are informing Wales-wide actions. On energy, for example, we are working regionally engaging communities and the public and private sectors in local area energy planning to decarbonise heat and local transport and realise opportunities for local renewable energy production. Supported by our Welsh Government Energy Service and through Community Energy Wales, we are well on our way to our target for one gigawatt of renewable energy generation capacity to be locally owned by 2030. The public sector is uniquely placed to influence and support change in local communities, as well as leading the way by tackling its own emissions. And this summer, we have truly co-developed some ambitious low carbon commitments with local authorities, and these will be published in our Net Zero Wales plan this autumn. We have to take every citizen with us as we move towards a greener, fairer future. We know that tackling climate change isn't just about tackling emissions. Active travel brings health benefits in exercise and lower pollution, and recycling and circular economies support local jobs and local skills. Maintaining and improving local biodiversity makes our towns and villages more pleasant places in which to live, work and visit. Earlier this year, Blaen Gwent ran one of the first climate assemblies in Wales. The local authority drew on local residents' knowledge and their ideas as to how they can tackle the climate crisis in a way that improves life for everyone. Monmouthshire Community Climate Champions is a network of community groups, renewable energy companies and the council working on climate change and energy projects. They organise an annual Eco Open Doors event where local homes and properties with renewable energy energy saving and sustainable living futures 
open their doors to the community to inform and inspire others to make their homes more sustainable. And in Carmarthenshire, the Walk the Global Walk helps young people support the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Pupil ambassadors across 15 schools raise awareness of climate change and lead actions within their communities. And then they share their work with decision makers in an annual global walk. There are many more great examples of people directly contributing to the heart of local politics and influencing change in their area. And I hope that what you hear about today will inspire you and help us all to get to a thriving, sustainable, net zero future. So thank you very much for listening and enjoy the rest of the conference. I was elected two years ago, in May 2019. I walked into our office on day one, having got there on the Metro. We were a brand new organisation. We only had three permanent members of staff. The journalists and camera crew outnumbered us by more than two to one. I faced the cameras and I said, we are facing a climate emergency. And, and we still are. The scale of the challenge cannot be underestimated and it requires central governments to step up and take it as seriously as they took Covid. As a regional leader and as local government though, there is much we can do. Aspirations about a cleaner economy don't cut it. Roadmaps, 10 point plans, long term targets, all very good. But let's face the truth, it's delivery that matters. I've put the North of Tyne Combined Authority on the path to being a net zero organisation. I have no mayoral car. I share the electric cool pool car, uh, which is a locally built Nissan Leaf. We've sourced renewable electricity, minimised our emissions, and we've purchased carbon offsets from trees planted here in the northeast. And as soon as it's verified that they've actually grown and sequestered the carbon, we will be net zero on scope one and scope two emissions. So it's no greenwash when I say we are on the path to net zero. My role is mostly about economic development and we've embedded environmental policy as a key implication in every investment we make. We've invested 25 million in our offshore wind and subsea, sec sub <coughs> subsea sector, improving infrastructure like stronger cranes to handle bigger turbines and funding high tech solutions like digital technology with sensors, cable arrays and digital twins to reduce the costs of installing offshore wind. We've landed the UK's first gigafactory manufacturing electric batteries to decarbonise Britain's vehicle fleet. We're investing in mine water heating to turn our high carbon past into a low carbon future. Uh, too many of our, our brightest and best have innovative ideas but can't raise the capital to get them off the ground. That's why our Green New Deal directly funds investments into solar capacity and energy efficiency. This £18 million fund is creating hundreds more jobs, lowering people's energy bills and reducing fuel poverty. <coughs> Government set me one major target. Create 10,000 jobs over 30 years. Two years in, we should have 700 jobs in the pipeline. The actual number? 4,193 jobs in the pipeline from a standing start and another 2,655 jobs safeguarded through the pandemic. We're smashing our target by a factor of six. And every one of these jobs pays income tax and national insurance to Treasury, more than covering the cost of funding the North of Time. It's real and it's happening now. So don't let anyone tell you that a just transition is bad for the economy. It's just the opposite. Now, not everybody is going to be building electric vehicles or wind turbines. I meet with CEOs and investors and they like what I say. We've brought foreign investment to create high quality exporting jobs here. Firms exporting over the internet, professional services and software development. We're investing over £3 million in our creative sector and millions more in our festivals programme. Developing homegrown festivals that not only increase domestic tourism, but create year round jobs here, giving our region a buzz. Of course, climate breakdown is not the only emergency we face. I don't own a car, I cycle to meetings, I have solar panels on my roof, yeah. But that's not an option for everyone. If you live in a town with unreliable, expensive buses, if you have to drop your kids off at school and then head off to the first of your two minimum wage part-time jobs, 
you're not going to be thinking about buying a Tesla. You'd be too busy putting food on the table. So every job we create here is backed by our Good Work Pledge. And to get advanced accreditation as an employer, they must pay the real living wage, use fair employment practices, no gig economy contracts, no fire and rehire, must engage the workforce via trade union recognition, provide mental health support at work, and provide training so that workers can skill up and turn a job into a career. And as an employer, my authority sets an example. We have a gender pay gap of zero. We're debunking the myth that to be pro-economy you have to be anti-union. Unionised workplaces are more productive, have lower staff turnover and than non-unionised workplaces. Uh, and I've reversed central government's short-sighted cuts to union learn. The North of Tyne union learning programme is now stronger than ever. Full-time staff support the network of union learning reps to help low-paid workers access training and earn more. And our Devolved Skills program is funding vocational skills like getting an HGV license or training as a chef. And we've put two million pounds aside for those in high carbon industries to retrain in clean energy and the jobs of the future. That's the just transition in action now. Covid and the climate crisis have shown the cracks in our economy. It can no longer be about rising share prices or housing bubbles. Everyone deserves a secure future. Our community wealth building program supports local independent firms. We've partnered with teaching unions to establish a multi-stakeholder cooperative supply agency. So this enables supply teachers to be eligible for pensions and continuous professional development. It's a win-win for the teachers, the schools and the kids they teach. We're building a zero carbon, zero poverty northeast. And democracy means taking people with us. We've completed the North of Tyne Citizens Assembly on Climate Change we're implementing the recommendations and that report is published on the North of Tyne website. I set up the, the Mayor's Fund to directly fund community projects through our Space Hive crowdfunder. So when a community project can demonstrate widespread local support, we put in a slug of money to get their project off the ground. We funded everything from urban regreening to community beekeeping. We're funding world-class climate education. We've supported school teachers to become UN accredited climate change teachers. And our Kids Action Through Climate Change project gives primary school kids hands on practical lessons, everything from soil analysis to biodiversity around ponds. Uh, secondary school children can participate in our Bring It On Schools project for future engineers. Uh, this is where kids engage with real world problems, such as how to make a, a bus station net zero. And six formers can join our climate change computer game project, working with games manufacturers to develop climate change simulation games and gain real world skills. And those projects are coming online this academic year. We haven't fixed everything. We need transport devolving to build a net zero transport system. We need the full devolution of skills and housing. These are key components of the just transition. And I'm pushing for a regional wealth fund to invest in local SMEs to create an ethical finance system. And government know we need this, but I'm doing what I can with the tools available. The North East was built on coal and heavy engineering, and we lost that, and we suffered decades of unemployment and, and underinvestment. But I'm determined, we're gonna take everybody with us. We're gonna rise like a phoenix and create a zero carbon, zero poverty North East.